Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. In this episode, we go three sheets to Puerto Rico. I drink beer, I drink rum, and I uh, got a hangover. That's, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> oh, some of us want to monkey around. <laughs> Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning, hard alcohol and machetes do not mix. You'll see more of that later, but first. Puerto Rico, an unincorporated territory of the United States since 1898, and home to some drinks that are rarely experienced outside the island. Unique drinks that serve as symbols of national pride. Two hands, Jim, please, please, respect. Or maybe I should say territorial pride. There's a light beer many say is actually good. That's right, beer snobs. I said good light beer. It's Ichiba. There's the rum that locals revere and outsiders hardly know about. And there's the birthplace of what is now a world-renowned cocktail. Whether it's the beach, the bar, or the distillery, I'll take you there to capture the essence of Puerto Rican drinking. I'd say this is the best pina colada in the universe. And while I'm at it, I'll mix it up a bit. Woo! Bust a bartender for cheating. You have a cheat sheet. Give me your cheat sheet. And do some cool tricks with bottles. When I go three sheets to Puerto Rico. Three sheets? Three, three sheets? My journey begins at Pinones Beach, just outside of San Juan. I've stumbled upon a traditional Puerto Rican fast food stand, complete with a cook, armed with a traditional Puerto Rican food prep implement. It slices, it dices, it forms and folds. The ultimate universal food preparation device revered by locals and feared by outsiders, the machete. This product is not allowed on airplanes. He's using his machete to make a traditional Puerto Rican snack, which I'm told is perfect for soaking up whatever it is I'll be drinking later on today. Como se llama? Uh, Alcapurria. Al I'm good. I'm good at drinking cerveza, pero no making Alcapurria. Alcapurria is a paste of plantains and taro root. It's often stuffed with a sort of meat sauce. They tell me this one has crab in it. It's formed in a banana leaf and then dropped into a giant vat of grease. It's like bubbling goodness, right? If I ever mentioned my theory on fried foods, you can fry any, anything and I'll eat it. You could, you could chop your finger off with that machete, put it in here, bread it, fry it. I bet that'd be the best finger I've ever, ever eaten. You see how greasy it is? Wow. I need something refreshing to deal with all that grease. And as luck would have it, there just happens to be a guy on the beach with a giant machete and a couple of fresh, juicy coconuts. I'm gonna call him the king. You, your name is Elvis, and you got Elvis a coconut and a knife. The king of coconuts and I are gonna drink some coconut juice. What would the other Elvis say? You know, sing. Stab me in the heart, and then you kid it. Right, so guys, stab me in the coconut. <laughs> Coconuts have high levels of lauric acid, which is believed by many to have powerful medicinal benefits. Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Hey! Hopefully it'll strengthen my system for the inevitable. You know what I wish no, I had no, besides no, a really sharp machete? I wish I had a straw. <laughs> Let's see what you get. It's good. It's good. 
You know what we need to put in this? Rum. Rum? Yeah, you guys have rum here in Puerto Rico? Does Elvis have rum? Of course he does. And not just any old rum, he's got Don Q, or Don Q, as they say in these parts of town. Yeah, a little, a little bit. No, 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 go nuts. It's a more, drinking, it's a drinking more, show. More, I don't even see any coming out, Elvis. Oh. There we okay. go. That's rum! That's good, then. Though it's not as widely known throughout the world as some other Puerto Rican rums, it's the top-selling rum among locals. Ooh. Yeah. Good. Tastes rummy. Yeah, put a little more in there. Don't you want some more? Yeah, don't be shy. Don't get drunk. Why? Because. That's my job to get drunk, Elvis. To get drunk. That's what people want to see. They want to see me drink. So what makes Don Q rum so special? Let's go find out. So I leave the beach and travel to the town of Ponce to visit the historic Sarayas Castle. This opulent mansion is actually a museum that used to be the home of Don Juan Eugenio Sarayas Perez. He's the guy who started Don Q. He's dead now. And no, they don't make rum here at the museum, but they do make it at the nearby distillery. Let's get the facts. The Don Q Distillery sits on the site of what was once a sugarcane plantation. But in 1865, sugarcane mogul Don Juan Eugenio Sarayas Perez imported this copper still from France and got into the rum making business. Don Q makes about 60% of all the rum sold locally. It is available in the US and other countries, but in limited quantities. Don Q, by the way, is short for Don Quixote. But back when it was established, there were copyright issues with the title, so they couldn't put the whole name on the bottle. OK, enough with the factoids. Back at the museum, I need to find someone to drink with me. Do you know our viewers? Have you ever watched the show? I'm afraid I have never I'm watched the show. I'm afraid I haven't either. I heard it's good. This is Miriam, the museum lady. She works here at the museum and has nothing to do with the making of rum. But somehow I've convinced her to join me. <laughs> Maybe you need lipstick on. They can put lipstick on me. They, they put like white or shiny lipstick on. On me? On men. Newsflash, Three Sheets does not have a makeup department. Jim, I'm getting a little sweaty. That sweat and those blemishes and little pock marks on my skin are real. OK, that's enough. That's enough. Miriam introduces me to the company lineup of rums, from young to old. Huh, this looks familiar. Remember Appleton Rum in Jamaica? So take a sip. <laughs> a sip. Seems like I already know everything there is to know. Rums take on color and flavor from the barrels they age in. The longer they age, the more color and flavor. Right? Right! But that doesn't make this rum like that rum. Time for a showdown! Don Q is the most popular rum among Puerto Ricans. Appleton is the oldest of all the Jamaican rums. Don Q uses faster acting yeast, which reduces the development of flavor carrying compounds during fermentation. Appleton uses a slower acting yeast, which creates a richer flavor profile. Lighter, richer. Lighter, richer. Sounds like another age old dispute that only you, the taster, can settle for yourself. When I like to drink uh, a gentleman drink, as, as this is, I, I put a finger out like this. And I recommend to all of our viewers to do that. If you are taking a wine or something, or something, uh, maybe something with, with crushed ice, or an umbrella, pinky up. A nice gentleman drink. Uh, is that a rule? Or that's a rule. That's a rule. I learned something today. You did. So did I, because I, I, I just that. made it up. <laughs> Good? Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's smooth. By the way, you might be thinking that this clear Don Q Cristal is not aged. No color, no aging, right? Wrong. It's actually been filtered through charcoal, which takes out the color and many other flavor-carrying compounds, leaving behind a very light rum, almost neutral in flavor. See, Don Q Cristal is, you usually mix it. Whoops. With, you, I didn't know that before I drank it. So there you have it. Whether it's filtered, young, or aged, it's distinctly light. Man, that's good Don Q. 
but come on. If you come to Puerto Rico, you're not gonna sit outside and slug straight shots at Don Q in front of an old mansion that's been converted into a museum. I need to get to the bottom of the Puerto Rican drinking scene. So I'm headed to Old Town San Juan, where there are bars, great traditions, and some drinks with my name on them. Coming up, the ongoing debate over who invented a world-renowned cocktail. And the pin pinnacle, it started here. Yeah, 1963 Barachino. in Barrachina. Yeah. All right, right now I'm in Old Town San Juan, and I'm looking for a place that served the first pina colada back in 1642. This bar called La Medicina has a plaque outside claiming it's the birthplace of the pina colada, so I must be in the right place, right? What's up, Cabe? What's going on, my man? You gotta finish it, and you're gonna show us how to make the perfect pina colada. And the pi pina colada, it started here. Yeah, 1963 Barachino. in Barachina. Yeah. Um, a uh, bartender named Ramon. Hold it. Freeze that. Did you did you see that? Look, he's cheating. Named Ramon. <laughs> you were cheating. <laughs> give me your cheat sheet. Give me it, give me it. You were wrong. Is that uh, Ramon Porter? <laughs> Just to be clear, the name on the plaque outside is Don Ramon Portas Mignot. But, other people argue that the first pina colada was actually invented at the other end of town, at the Caribe Hilton back in 1954. So what's the deal? Time for some history. The debate begins with the more complicated question, what is a pina colada? What does colada mean? Colada literally means strained. Strained? Yeah. So does it mean strain, strained pineapple? That's right. Clearly, a pina colada is more than just strained pineapple juice. There are recipes that go back to the early 1900s that refer to pina coladas as having various combinations of pineapple, rum, and coconut. But none of these recipes call for cream of coconut, which is a key ingredient in the pina colada recognized by bartenders and fufu drink lovers throughout the modern world. There's the difference between coconut milk and coconut cream. Tell me. This is the sweet cream of the coconut. Yeah. And the coconut meal is just meal. It's just plain, like, why like, yeah, more liquid Yeah, I, I drank that I, when I cut a coconut open and I drank it, right? Is that coconut milk? No, no, that's coconut water. That's coconut water. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, coconut water is the juice that comes straight from the coconut. Coconut milk is a thick, white substance that is strained from shredded coconut meat, often used in soups. And cream of coconut is a mixture of coconut milk and sugarcane nectar developed in Puerto Rico in the year 1954. So it is possible that the original pina colada as we know it today was indeed invented at the Caribe Hilton back in 1954. In fact, it is more frequently credited as the official birthplace of the drink. But La Berachina has this cool plaque, a friendly bartender, and me inside it. So let's do this. No measuring, just eyeballing. So watch closely. Ice in a blender. It's an exact science. Pineapple juice. This much of pineapple. A little more. No? Okay. There you go. Coconut cream. You get to see this over here, how thick it is. Nice. That is pretty good. And a rum. There you okay, go. Okay, I finish it. Okay. What was that? That's it. There we go. And look. Well, why yeah, not? You know, yeah. Went in Puerto Rico. Next, he blends, pours, and garnishes. Normally, I don't drink, um, you know, sugary, sweet drinks like this. After but this one, you will. I will? I'd say this is the best pina colada in the universe. There we go. We're taking in the universe. So if you come to Puerto Rico and you come to uh, Old San Juan, then you have to come to Berechino and you need to ask for Gabe and he'll hook you up. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you are a spy dog. Yeah. Keep your eye on him. <laughs> but there's more to drinking in Puerto Rico than just pina coladas. 
much more. And I'm told to expand my Puerto Rican drinking horizons, I need not look any further than no-no's. Here, the bartenders fear no bartending challenge. Salud. Why don't you just do? Open a beer with your four? All right, that works for a screw top, but what about a pop top? Yeah! And of course, an old favorite. I'll show the layer trick, go ahead. Same, same principle. Yep. Hey! Can you please use that sound effect on my bottle pop? <laughs> Thanks. Now the question is, what do we do with all these beers? JR has a customary ode before drinking. So, you know, Two hands, Jim, make please. Make this respect. feel good. Make this feel good. You know? Yeah. Clear my mind. Clear my liver. All right. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this in two seconds, but I have to say that there's there's a lot at stake here because you have the host of America's favorite drinking show. You have a bartender from one of the finest uh, drinking establishments in you know, Old San Juan, and you have a uh, a, a police officer from, uh, from from New York. This is a lot. If any of us lose this, we'll be ridiculed. Curtis, why don't you say one, two, three, drink? One, two, three, drink. <laughs> Exactly in the order it should have happened. I would not like to be you. There's gonna be a lot of cops that are unhappy with you. Maybe you should move to Canada. The beer we drank is not just any old beer, by the way. It is the Puerto Rican beer. It's called Medalla Light. Salud. And to learn about it, I give you the professor. With an alcohol content of roughly 5%, Medaille Light is stronger than many other light beers. Yet it contains only 98 calories per bottle. And it's known for having a stronger flavor profile than many of its watery competitors. It has won several awards for its notably distinct hoppy character. But if you want to try it, you need to come to Puerto Rico because it's not exported. You gotta come here and drink it. <laughs> Back at the bar, JR's fellow barkeep, Jorge, wants to school me on their house mojito. Let's refer back to the Three Sheets recipe book. The original mojito, invented in Cuba, is a mixture of rum, sugar, ice, lime juice, spearmint, and soda water. But the truth is, the fixins vary from country to country and bar to bar. Remember Belize? Is this a secret ingredient? It's similar, yeah. This is basically what my secret ingredient is. Yeah, this is the secret ingredient, so we're not gonna tell you what it is. Okay, go ahead. Well, now I'm in Puerto Rico, and the bartender is showing me his house mojito. It's like a minty lemonade. It's something like that you can, you know, define the mojito. It is like a minty lemonade. Yeah. You want one? Oh. Want me to make you one? Yeah. Okay. Please. Coming up, did I learn well? Find out when my skills are put to the test. Salute. Salute, kill it, baby. And later, see if heat is really a solution for a hangover. Whoa. I'm at Nono's Bar in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Jorge has just given me a crash course in mojito making, yeah! And I've been challenged to show him my stuff. Yeah. It's go time. Welcome to the Three Sheets International Drink Making Games, where host Zane Lamprey has been training intensely on the nine step process of making a mojito. Each step is worth 10 points. Can he score a perfect 90? Let's start the action. I put in uh, five lives. One, two, three, four, five. He said five and put in four. The judges give him eight out of 10 for that one. We used to use spearmint, but it's very difficult to get mint, spearmint in bulk, so I, I, I have to use the, 
the leaves we got here. He's right. The original Cuban mojito calls for spearmint, but mint is normally used because it's more available. 10 out of 10. Three shovels of sugar. Another perfect 10. One ounce and a half? Yeah. One, six. That's good? Yeah, cut. Oh, that's enough? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. A little overboard, but he still earns a respectable eight out of 10 because too much is better than not enough. And then I mull it? That, yeah. And then I mull it. This is, this is badass. Check out that mullet. My oh my. This is definitely gonna earn Lamprey a bad joke penalty, setting him back 10 whole points. Then you put ice in it. Major overflow foul there. He'll get a four out of 10 for that one. And then six soda water. Nice spill, Lamprey. 10 out of 10. But then our host completely skipped step eight. He was supposed to shake, and instead he reached for the straw. He earns a zero out of 10 because you never serve a mixed drink without mixing it. This is the perfect mojito. That looks more like swamp water than a mojito, Lamprey. Damn, that's good mojito. Lamprey gets a weak three out of 10 for presentation. Giving him a not so grand total of 53 out of 90, earning him a spot in the Three Sheets Hall of Shame. Boo hoo, go home. Hey, remember, I'm not paid to make them, I'm paid to drink them. Yoo hoo! And I've done plenty of that today. Wow, tomorrow could be painful. Yeah, what's going on? Ooh. <laughs> I got a hangover. Barkeep, what's the hangover cure down in the Hangover East? cure, we have fish stew. Fish yeah, stew? Yeah, that makes, you know, the hangover Lunch. sweat. You're gonna sweat the hangover? Yeah? Yeah. You need that? I do, I do need it. Oh, yeah, And then okay. maybe I'll take a little hair of the dog, I'll get it sure. to you, all right. The soup is piping hot. Taste it. Part of that whole sweat out your hangover thing. I guess they think it should be both piping and spicy hot. That'll make you sweat, but is sweating really good for a hangover? I got some more hot sauce. Actually, it is and it isn't. Let's refer to the Three Sheets Medical Journal on hangovers. Sweating does rid the body of some toxins, but because dehydration is a side effect of hangovers, extensive sweating can further contribute to loss of body fluids, thus worsening dehydration and your hangover. I think I might need to add my own special twist. Where are you from? Where am I from? I'm from a place they don't eat piping hot soup in 90 degree weather. That's where I'm from. There we go. There we go. Good enough to do away with the spoon. Well. <laughs> it makes you feel better? It makes me feel like I got a runny nose. <laughs> so there you have it. From a light beer that many believe to be flavorful and full-bodied. Ooh, me gusta, my dada. Es numero uno. El sabor que nos mueve. Sí, claro. To a style of rum that sets Puerto Rico apart from the rest of the world. You usually mix it. Whoops. I didn't know that before I drank it. From a machete-wielding guy named Elvis. <laughs> to Gabe. The cliff note toting pina colada master. <laughs> you have a cheat sheet. <laughs> Give me your cheat sheet. And me, the worst mojito maker on the island. That's a good mojito. Puerto Rico, a great place to leave my mark. Puerto Rico. Y el loco amigo tuyo.